So welcome to the NFT podcast, John. It's a great pleasure to have you here. How's it going? I'm doing good. Thanks, man. Thanks so much for having me. No, amazing. Uh, really great to be here. Amazing. So I want to start with your story because you made so many things that I want to start from the beginning. So just give me your background story. Maybe if you, also from where, when you were a child, when you start, like from where you want. Sure. How long do you have? <laughs> Hours, story. millennials. I'll do the short, I'll do the short version. Um, I'm obviously British. Uh, I was born in London. Um, I uh, was on stage um, acting and on television from the age of eight and 10 years old in the UK. Um, when I was 14, uh, I started my first company um, and I won an award from the Queen's husband, the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, and I was very excited about making things. Um, I was very much a designer and an artist. Uh, I studied architecture um, and um, art and design foundation at Manchester University. Um, and I realized that you can design with a computer just as well as you can with your hands, if not better, because it's uh, more perfect, right? It's uh, easier to, uh, to get it all in place. So I started to create with lots of different tools, uh, uh, Blender and uh, Dreamweaver and um, um, uh, After Effects and um, various different programs, right? Yeah. Photoshop uh, a lot of the time. Um, and it was all based on these CAD programs that we used in, in architecture that I realized you can make 3D models. So why can't you make websites and games and all sorts of designs? So I started to do that. Um, built a few different companies, uh, some of them success, some of them uh, hard headache, uh, as you know, startups are. Uh, everything was design and innovation. Everything that I did was to do with design and innovation and changing the world and making it better, making it more usable, making it uh, more enjoyable for everybody. Um, so uh, about five years ago, I had finished uh, making companies Uh, I was helping loads of different people. They were coming to ask me to say, look, you've done it before. Can you help me? How do I do this? How do I do that? And my cousin came to me and he said to me, Johnny, you've got to do this on TV. He said, you know, this is really cool what you do. You help people, you change the world, you do this, but you've got to do it on TV. And I was like, man, I don't want to be on TV again, right? Like, I'm not like, I don't, I don't want to do that. And he was like, look, I wrote a 40 page business plan. Read it and then call me back. So I'm like, you wrote a 40 page bit? All right, send it to me. So he sends it and I see the company that we have today and I was, I was blown away because what he, what he uh, thought of was a company that can take all of my skills and expertise and do it to helping others, to helping people who don't have any exposure, people who are doing amazing things, but they don't have the platform to tell their story to the world. Um, and I was really helping those people, but I wasn't helping them in the public eye. I was helping them privately. So we started to make TV shows. We made our first show called Tech Talk. Uh, Tech Talk was went on Amazon Prime and Apple TV in October 2019. So it's like a year and a half ago or so. And uh, we put 54 unknown companies uh, that were making like uh, flying cars and robots that look after the grandparents and drones that fly into burning buildings to, to warn the firefighters. Really, really cool stuff. Um, so we, we made the show. Uh, it was very successful. It's now in 83 countries. We won like 15 International Film Festival Awards last year. And the 50 companies we put on the show have raised more than $350 million combined so far, right? So on every side of the show, just from taking amazing people and putting them on TV, and telling the story in a nice way and producing it well, we made massive, massive impact from it on all sides. Um, and it's been very exciting. We have lots of other shows, cannabis, sustainability, female entrepreneurship, and now a brand new NFT documentary, which we'll, we'll talk about in a minute, I guess. <laughs> you guess well. Okay, amazing story. Amazing from the beginning. Entrepreneur from the beginning and what you, the value that you created for this company. It's very incredible for me and it's very uh, 
important for me to say because I am in this period of life in which I'm about to, let's say, create my first company and based on my precedent skills will be a media company, let's say, probably. So it's very important for me to hear from you that media was what enables you to make all this because you were a philanthropist, you were an entrepreneur, you were an artist, and just by communicating, just by creating a show, let's say, a podcast, a film, you put it all together and value came, just communicating. So that's, that's really important for my theory that it's not important what you have, it's important what you share. And by sharing this kind of value creates one, one upon each other. Massive, massive effect from it and like you said I, you know i wasn't it's not about me any of the shows are not about me right they're about other people about yeah. other cool people but because i know how to communicate it well how i know to tell the story to other people how to present them um how to design it how to make it engaging and informative how to tell the story factually so that you enjoy it i, I have all those skills and so do my team i have we have a great team here and and like you said, because of that, we're just telling the story about other amazing people. And it made such amazing change in the world. And that's really, really exciting. It really, really exciting. Um, okay, so this your story so far. And now, what are you most passionate about, about in your life, in this time of your life? What are you, what are you working on that drives you every day? It's a great question. So uh, what I'm working on right now, I'll tell you first, is we're delivering before the end of the year two series to Discovery Asia. Uh, one of them is Inside NASA's Innovations, and the other one is The Rise of AI. So about artificial intelligence, about NASA and all their technology, two shows that we're launching to Discovery Asia by the end of the year. So we're working hard to get those finished. We have another gangster documentary that we are, mafia documentary that we're creating uh, that also will be finished before the end of the year. So we're working hard to finish those. Uh, I love what you asked me though. You said what I'm passionate about because I was passionate about all of this I'm working on, but then came the NFT industry, right? Six months ago. And I realized that, wow, all of my artwork, all of my design, everything came back to the front before it was kind of like, you know, pushed aside business and it's always there, but it was on the side. And all of a sudden the art and the design all came to the front. And now when I go out to the streets, I'm looking back at the buildings and the paintings and the graffiti, things that I missed because I was so immersed in the business world and I, and I forgot about that. So I think you can hear I'm passionate about that. I'm passionate about the NFT industry. It gives me a, um, the ability to use all of the skills, all of the, the um, different uh, verticals that I can create on to do it in one place, to do it immediately, to have immediate reaction, to have no middlemen, uh, there's there's so many so many amazing things to it. So, I got uh, sucked in to the NFT community. I re read about it, came in, found it for myself, came onto Clubhouse. Uh, since then, I'm almost running a lot of the clubs in Clubhouse uh, to do with NFTs and the communities. I'm advising people on a daily basis. I'm holding events, uh, um, and because of that, uh, I had to just make a documentary about it. So. I was, I was ready to have a rest when it came to Christmas, you know, like, say, okay, did three shows, man, just... It's enough. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but I got to do this. Yeah. So uh, we're releasing uh, in, on Monday, we're dropping 52 utility NFTs. Um, there are, they go alongside the show. So anybody can help to finance the first season of the show. When they buy the utility NFT, they get the NFT, which is worth money. They get the percentage of profit shares for five years. They get a bonus NFT, which is some unique content that they'll get. Um, and they get DAO. So they get to help to choose the direction of where the documentary is going. So I'm taking on one more. I'm passionate about the NFT industry in this documentary. And I'm passionate about the fact that I've made it in a way where it's community led. Right? It's community-inspired and led, so it's really much in the spirit of the NFT community. 
That's amazing. You are in, in the right place here talking about NFT utilities because that's <laughs> that's really what happened in my life so far. I created also my utility NFTs and I think that uh, that's the direction for doing any kind of project in the space. So let's take a, a step back in what you're saying. So communication again, like you are creating a documentary, you are creating a film, let's say, about NFTs. You want to, it, your, your goal is educating and you are building an entire strategy of NFTs around this. And it's amazing about the ownership that you are saying, because you say that basically we are in an era in which, thanks to NFTs, people that want, once were the, uh, the, say, the customers, the, the buyer, the viewers, they can also participate in this. So from, uh, in, people can become like the executive producers of the documentaries, right? This is, this is what you're saying in, in your case. So, yeah, so that they won't become executive producers. That will, that, you know, I'll still be the executive producer of the show, but they will have content direction on the show. So they'll become like the steering committee, you can call it, or something. So uh, we will give them every so often, we'll choose some uh, subjects and areas. We'll have a choice can vote on it and uh, the community will vote based on how much uh, DAO you have compared to how much you help to fund the initial production. So somebody did something similar concept. Uh, there's the Ethereum documentary. Yeah, uh, that has just been founded the, the last week, right? Right. Yeah. So the last week, uh, 1.8, 1.9 million dollars in three days. That's funded. incredible. Huh? What? I mean, that's faster than quick. Uh, Kickstarter or something, I think. Yes. Never saw a documentary or never see, I never saw in my life a crowdfunding so fast. It's incredible. Like, this I means no that. What they can make yeah. in the documentary for $2 million, they're going to have flying cars. In yeah. there <laughs> That's a big budget for a documentary. <laughs> um, so, what's true to true things? What's your documentary about? And in the specific, and what's the strategy launch of these NFTs for the documentary? Absolutely. I just want to say one more thing. I, I forgot to say that I'm obviously an NFT artist, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Separate to all of this stuff, yeah? Like, I create my own art, and, and so I've got like over 300 collectors. So I, I've, I've, it's not, I didn't just come in as a filmmaker. I know you know that, I just wanted to say it, but, but uh, of course, I do my artwork as well, which is, uh, which is really inspiring to be able to create in, in that way. Amazing. So the documentary is about the documentary in the, 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 the NFT industry. It's about telling people all of this amazing uh, encouragement and support and innovation and design and uh, everybody uniting together to do things like this. Just amazing spirit there is here of goodness, of, of positivity. Uh, and I want that to spread over to the rest of the world. I think that's because you have all of these creatives and innovative, innovative people in one place that are coming together to uh, to collaborate. And, and those are people who make stuff. They're not takers, right? They're makers. So so you put all these makers together and you put them in a place where they can shine and they can really grow. Uh, and you give them all these tools and what comes is an amazing, amazing thing. So I want to tell this story. I want the rest of the world to know uh, how to set up an NFT, how to buy one, how to get a wallet, what, you know, to be worried about giving your seed phrase to to how to protect yourself and not to click links, you know, those kind of things. But also about, look at this amazing artist. Look at this guy's story. Look at that guy's story. Hear from this one. Hear from an emerging artist. Hear from an established one, you know. Hear from the museum and that kind of thing. Community. Well, one of the yes, most important thing that we understand in this space so far, community. Show the community. Show how many possible things can happen on this platform, let's say. Yes. Yes, awesome. And um, how are you gonna launch these NFTs in order to support the documentary? So, what's the strategy behind? So, uh, there's 52 NFTs that we're dropping. They range from one to ten ETH each in value. Um, there are two NFTs at 25 ETH. One of them the company owns. One of them will be put for auction. Everything else is a set price. The one to ten are all set price. So um, those amount to 35% of the production budget. We're going to pay the rest, the 65%. Okay? Awesome. So we put two thirds, the community puts one third. With that one third, you're going to earn 35% of profit shares for five years. 
You're not going to own the documentary. You're going to own a profit share for five years. Wow. Because, because if we own it, there is legal problems that we go yeah. through and complications. So you'll own for five years a profit share. Not only that, when the, NF, when the documentary comes out, the NFT itself will be worth more money because people know it's attached to the profit share. Yeah. It starts to rise in value. So, of course, you can sell that. Um, they'll be on OpenSea in a collection. The collection's already ready on my OpenSea. There's no NFTs in it, but the collection is there. Um, they'll be dropped into a collection there. There is only 52 of them. They're very exclusive. Um, each of those will get DAO with them pro rata. So if you buy one or if you, if you buy one for one ETH or if you buy one for 10 ETH, the 10 ETH has a stronger voting power than the, than the one ETH, right? Um, and yeah, the community is going to get to have some choices over the direction, which artists. And also the people that we feature, the people that fund us, will try to feature them on some level because they've, uh, they've come and helped the production to, to get there. So if we can give them some limelight as well, that'd be great. That's absolutely awesome. So you're creating utilities, shirts, and government power around these NFTs. That's an incredible strategy to fund the project. And I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's, going, it's going well. So all the best luck for this. Um, Thank you. Coming back to documentaries in general, because you are in an incredible business of creating films, of creating documentaries, and you are in the middle of different projects at the inter intersection of industries. And I think that there are a lot of skills that you've developed so far, but there are two skills that I'd like to cover more with you from a traditional way. So no, that there are partnership, so the ability of developing partnerships in order to have a film, a project of this kind, and of course, fundraising. We talked so far about crypto fundraising, so fundraising with these new kinds of tools, but I would love you to go deeper inside. How do you, some tips on how to establish media partnership in order to create a documentary and some tips about fundraising for media documentaries? So creating media partnerships is really hard. The industry is really closed. Uh, you have to know people, right, uh, in the media industry. So we spent like three, four years going to conferences and stuff, trying, trying, trying. It, it, we made contact, but it wasn't easy to break through. To be honest with you, we had to fund it ourselves. Uh, that was the best way to do it. We funded Tech Talk ourselves. We created it. And then after we created it, we showed them they understood. They didn't understand beforehand. So we had to create it before they understood what it was. So uh, I actually say, for me, it was less partnerships. Okay, It was more action, creating, go out and make it. If you build it, they will come. So, you know, like go out and make it and then, and then show them it. And then they can't say no because, you know, they can say no before you make it. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know how. After you make it, they either like it or they don't. So if you make it really well, they're going to like it. So uh, I kind of go that way. It's a little bit risky. Other people don't go that way. They won't invest their money to do it. They want you know, the company to be sure. Um, but I believe in what we do. Um, and every project is carefully thought out. So um, we just uh, find a way to create it in independently. Um, we then create it. We use all of our skill, our enthusiasm, our passion to create it. Um, and then we go and make partnerships and you find when you have content, people want content. So if they can see it, it's very easy for them to make a decision if they want it or not. Yeah. It's, it's as simple as that. So the best way is to make it, send it out, keep, keep hitting people up, you know, making those connections. Um, and yeah, and that's, and that's really, that's, that's probably both questions is one is yes. I don't really, from, from a budget point of view, from the fundraising We do that through private investors or things like this or our own money, um, but we don't do it through the TV network. A normal company will make a pilot. They'll go to the TV network. They'll get a green light. The TV network will pay for it. You will be locked to that TV network for three or five years. Um, and then afterwards, you can do what you want. But I don't want to work that way. I want to own it. I want to call the shots. Um, and right now we sell Tech Talk to 24 different broadcasters in, in 83 countries. So, so because of that, we have much more uh, ability to, to, to sell and to, to branch out and, and et cetera. 
Good job. That's amazing. So you're saying basically the challenging, the most challenging part is at the beginning because you need really need to leverage on your network and understand that these people can be the first, let's say, investors in what you're doing. Then you build it, and other people wants to jump on board. And you mentioned for uh, uh, at the beginning that you made some public appearance, some public speeches about what you're doing, what you're creating. So and you said for years. So in order to raise money for a project is your kind of advice that you don't have to ask let's say uh, you need to build relationship over time it's just important to build relation that's for you the power the secret in order to having partners and fundraiser and, and fundraising over the time the secret is to have something because everybody can talk you have an idea, I have a concept, I want to do this, I want to do that. That's all great, right? But when you come with it and you say, hey, look at this. Oh, wow, he has something. So, so my answer is go with something, right? Don't go with an idea. Don't go with a concept. Everybody has a concept. Go with showing that you already produced something. Look, look at this thing. And say, oh, wow, I, I, I love it. That's the best way to get somebody on board. So if you're creating a, a collection or a film or a product or a software, get it to a stage where you can show them something and then you prove I'm, I'm worth something. I have something in my hand. It's, it's, it's valuable. Look at it and they can see it. It's tangible. Um, so, so I would say the best way to do it, you can ask. There's no problem with that. Don't be scared to ask. And if you ask, make sure you've got your business plan. Make sure you've got your financial forecast. Make sure you've got everything ready because they're going to ask for that. Don't You can't go, ah, 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 I'll get it for you. You have to be ready. So that's what I mean. Come with stuff in your hands. Come with your passion. Come with enthusiasm. But come with something. Don't just come with a story or a concept. And that has a lot more value. Already show the value and people want to buy in because of that. Yeah, totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of partners, is there some kind of particular partners that you prefer to have on board first? Let's say, or in general, you prefer, you prefer to have so some kind of industries. You are creating a documentary. So in order to create a documentary, which are the kind of partners that you need? Partners in terms of, can be anything, like projects that you interview or anything else. Like what's your usual way of doing this? Best partner in a production is a sponsor. That's a big brand. Let's say Google or somebody, right? They want to have their branding at the beginning or the end of the show or on the breaks. They're, they don't care too much about the content. They know what it is, but they're not going to you know, drive you mad about the content. Sure. Um, so they just give you a big check. You don't need to pay them back. That helps you to do everything. And all they need is their branding on it. And their branding on it makes you look better because you have a big brand, uh, you know, sure. their credibility there. So I would say the sponsor, sponsor is my best potential partner in any production, uh, is the big brand who wants to pay the big ticket. They want to be connected with it. They don't really have any control, but they get their brand there next to us the whole time. And we're happy and they're happy. Yeah. Okay, it's so simple, like, <laughs> it seems simple to hear, amazing. So being a founder inside into the NFT space, uh, you are, of course, are going to interview some people into the NFT space with this new documentary, and because you were involved from your life into tech, like you interviewed and you make documentaries with people in AR, VR, AI, and different kind of things. Talking about the NFT space from your point of view, is there already some interesting projects, startups, people that you spot that you that you are going to interview, that you're going to meet for the documentary, or are there others that you like to see over the next year or two to rise? So what's your general thoughts about the state of the industry now? What are you seeing that is good? And what would you like to see more over the next uh, one of two years? I think, I think the industry is very limited. I think that there is, a, there is a great community. It's growing, but it's very limited because the news talks about NFTs in the same way. Christie's, people, right, same story, same few buzzwords, but they don't really get it. So it's very limited in its reach right now. And my aim is to tell the story to a much bigger population. 
so that we increase the amount of people in this space drastically, right, overnight. So uh, the story I want to tell is, like I said, of this amazing environment, amazing community, helping others, opportunity, encouragement, love, support, uh, learning, all, all great, great stuff. Um, so I really, really want to tell that story. I'm very excited about Rafik and Adol, um, the reactive uh, uh, art artist. He does amazing, moving art in, in, in buildings and museums around the world. It's incredible. I can't wait to see some of his stuff up close. Um, I can't name any names, but some other artists are creating some artwork to go on the spaceship for SpaceX. It's going to go into space. It's wow. also reactive art. Um, it's super, super cool. Uh, we have some people, again, I can't name any names, who are um, doing all of the outdoor advertising in like Times Square and around the world to put NFTs really in the world, right? So uh, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about Art Basel in Miami. Uh, I'm excited about seeing holograms and uh, more uh, projected art. Um, just it looks so futuristic. This is a combination of everything I've ever done, right? This is how I bring all of my tech and futurism and business into my art and creativity and innovation. They all meet in the middle and you get this explosion of uh, futuristic technologies and creativity and innovation. It's so freaking exciting. Man. No, it's absolutely amazing. And you know what is amazing? The creator economy that is rising around NFTs. So really the opportunity to monetize everything on chain, let's say, the opportunity of not, not just i think what is amazing about NFTs in general is that we are, they are making us all more financial educated. I think that's amazing. Like we are, we are passing from this economy of like, share and follow into an economy where we can all, not say not all become rich, of course, but all have the opportunity of challenging us in really how to monetize in an easier way what you are doing. And about this, because I saw that you are, You also have got a profile on BitCloud, so you know what is, let's say, on-chain monetization. You know what is creator economy. So I would like to have your two chance, two chance on this. So your thoughts on BitCloud and on everything that is the present and the future of creator economy. So I think BitCloud is cool. I think that they, uh, I'm, I'm waiting to see their NFT platform that they come out with and how that is. I was never a big fan of their design, to be honest with you. I know that it's like that um, on yeah. purpose. Um, but I went on there and I kind of tried to use the social element of it. I didn't see much activity, so I kind of left it. So I think there is a big market there. It's definitely how we're going. There is definitely, like you said, influencers who are now influencers on Instagram. In 10 years' time, they'll be earning money directly for that. It's not like if you've got like hundreds of thousands of people on any channel, that's going to be directly earning you money rather than just be, oh, it's cool to have follows, right? So uh, it is the change of the monetization of those things. I agree that all these creative people, right, have had to really put on their entrepreneurial brain and find out how to sell, how to market, how to shill, how, you know, which is hard for all of them. So you've got this collaboration, you've got this meeting of creativity and business, um, And uh, as you said, it's making people who create, people who, who, who can develop things, who can run things, um, are going to see the financial rewards of that um, in the short and the long term, right? Because the more you build up, I'm thinking about all these things I'm building up. You know, the more you build up, they become like planting seeds, right? You have suddenly you have a forest because you've planted these seeds and you've got so many things on the blockchain that are connected to you suddenly don't need to worry about money anymore, right? Because it's just coming in from all these different sources. So it's definitely something like that. The technology is definitely not there. BitCloud's definitely not there. Like it's, it's a good concept, but they've got a long way to go to really get that to Facebook uh, working uh, level, even though Facebook doesn't work very well, um, like the technology. Okay. Um, but I, I think those sites are good. I think there's definitely going to be some advancements. Um, I just bought some land in muse.art m-u-s-e-e dot -E art um they have a page which is like the million dollar home page where they had a million pixels and you can buy for one dollar each well here they have ten thousand squares and you can buy for 0.1 ethereum each and i bought like six of them and i have 
have my eye there. And when you click into it, you go into my gallery, you go into the trailer for the NFT documentary. It's a selling point. It's a portal. So people are buying these different portals to have access. People are connecting to these different blockchain uh, um, transactions. So they're going to get paid out. You know, the more art you sell, the more that's out there for secondary, third, fourth markets. It's, it's an incredible time to be alive. And I think it's very exciting. And even with the entertainment industry, right? People, you, you, you work in a movie, it's going to be connected to the blockchain. So when it sells another 5,000 tickets, everybody's going to get paid out immediately. Not like after six months, not after a year, right? So changing time is very, very exciting. Um, and things are moving really fast, which I like. Right. So that's good for me, uh, that the innovation and the changes are happening very fast. It's hard for other people, but for me, I really, really enjoy that. More things, more things moving, more things I can film, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> of course. So you say basically about BitCloud and what we're thinking now into the greater economy. It's something that is moving very fast and that's amazing to see from incredible developers that are creating incredible lines of codes every day and creating all com community builders and community designers. You basically saying that there are two parts not, not working, and there are the, the both of them. So one is that the platform is not uh, ready, it's not so smart, uh, so, um, so let's say it doesn't have a monetization on chain as we wanted, so this is a bit clout, and this is why some people, some users went away, so maybe it was good at the beginning, yes, to redeem your token. And the other one is that people are not ready, because basically people that are out of the crypto community, I'm not sure they are, that also if tomorrow that will be the best and social media platform that is going to reward you. First of all, they are not going to believe it, probably, because they will think that it's a scam. Like, hey, how is it possible? Since yesterday, I was spending five hours on Instagram, and I was losing my time while, while my parents were screaming at me, my teacher was screaming at me, saying that I'm losing my time watching the, the, the next TikTok. And now, how is it possible that one from a second they are giving me money to stay on the platform because that's basically it. Like I, I want a future in which we are going to be rewarded for all the time, all the passive time that we spent. And unfortunately, building a personal brand, it's, a, it's good, let's say, and, but it, it won't be enough, let's say, over the next years because it's not just building a personal brand. So having, let's say, working on the platform, but it's really contributing because why why we are contributing in creating the platform because we are giving our time we're giving our data we are not paid back so i'm not sure that there are a lot of people that are ready for this so this is what you're saying like there is a problem in technology a problem in developers and a problem in the users user base that is still not ready because i don't know how big is the crypto community so far and i know that the nft community is a small part of the crypto community but i'm not sure that it's so big in order to really create uh, uh, a billion a, a billion user product as Facebook is. That's why I'm making the documentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I really, I really happy to talking with you about this because I think that education is, first of all, it's the most important thing of the world. But when we are talking about NFTs and crypto, education and media put together, it's the first thing that you need to know. So. For people that started in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, like, of course, building projects on a side and the other one is educating because you, need, you are creating a market. So if you want a product market fit over the next years, you need to educate people and understand this. And I think it's really exciting. It seems more difficult, but while educating others, you are educating yourself. And that's so important into this. And just those two things, what you said about the market, one of them is technology, right? So the technology is not there and functionality. And the other one is uh, discovery. When you go to the platforms, it's hard to find artists. It's hard to find what you're looking for. It's not easy to search. There isn't a Google of, of NFTs. Yes. So the two problems of technology and discovery, right? Or exposure or marketing, whatever you want to call it, until they nail those, which everybody's working on, but until they nail those, it's not really going to take off in the in the greater world. And that's why I'm helping with the documentary series and other things, but it will be a combined effort. Yeah, and I think that about you said, Google NFT, we need a platform that connects to all the other platforms. So like we really need this kind of metaverse ready 
in which we can connect to all the other. Because otherwise, okay, where can I find you on Foundation or Redible on OpenSea on uh, Non Origin? It's so hard to find one person on, on all those things. Yes. You could say that Get Sh Try Showtime does that, but it's not mainstream Sh Try Showtime. It's still inside the NFT industry. Yeah. Yeah. From what you saw in your experience in tech, what is that make tech mainstream at one point? What think that is going? It's it's a difficult question. I understand that, like, but what do you think is really bring NFTs to be more mainstream in order to create this kind of mega applications that will be that will make life easier for anyone? Well, tech was computers and smartphones, right? So when the consumer can get something themselves, they care about it, right? So iPod. Uh, smartphones, laptops, computers, that's what really made technology mainstream, right? And Apple. Um, what's going to make it mainstream here? Uh, NFT Me, the documentary, uh, <laughs> is going to make it mainstream. But it, it's already happening. You see the celebrities coming in. You see bigger brands. It's a combination of uh, media, celebrities, brands, big companies, marketing, all those kind of things um, and I think it's all in process but you know like this and other things we have to do more because it's still a very very small community compared to the you know compared to Wall Street or the people who trade you know stocks around the world or something like that. it's a tiny tiny community in comparison yeah I absolutely agree okay Johnny I am very happy that you came here to share your thoughts about how your documentary is going to help all us in bringing a more bright NFT future and by sharing your tips about documentaries and the entire creator economy. So it's been a pleasure. And of course, I'm going to link everything you said here in the description for our people that can go and maybe hopefully buy your NFT on this Monday. So thank you very much for coming here today. Thank you so much. It's really great being on the NFT podcast. Um, love what you guys are doing. And thanks so much for the spotlight. Really, really appreciate it.